Walk and Talk podcast, now sweetened by Noble Citrus. Bite into a juicy crunch tangerine, 40 years perfected, seedless and oh so tasty. Or savor a starburst pomelo, the giant citrus with a unique zing. Don't miss autumn honey tangerines, big and easy to peel. Noble, generations of citrus expertise, delivering exceptional flavor year-round. Taste the difference with Noble Citrus. food fam this is the walk and talk podcast your favorite food podcast and i'm your host carl fiadini welcome to the show we're podcasting on site at ibis images studios where food photography comes alive and uh, i get to eat it um, first things first last week uh, we cooked up uh, some traditional dishes and put an elevated chef uh, jeffersonian spin on them uh, then we got to thinking about like happy childhood meal memories Steakums, yeah, you heard that correctly. Steakums, uh, more like steak. Um, my goodness, yeah. Somehow that Sammy disappeared. Okay, um, we had a friend of ours, good friend, uh, Lisa Leventhal. She's the owner of Curveball Whiskey uh, Company. She sent us a beautiful promotional gift box uh, with some really cool swag, and of course, there was a bottle of their uh, original barbecue whiskey and yeah i did say barbecue whiskey um yeah she supplied this delicious drink uh, while we were at the world food championship and i just wanted to give a uh you know thank you to lisa check out her uh, instagram or ig at curveball with a k curveball whiskey on the menu today we've got pecan smoked ribeye four different dishes worth of that deliciousness yeah pecan smoked ribeye Oh, my goodness. And speaking of ribeye, thank you, Peninsula Food Service, for supplying the proteins for today's production. Our guest this week is Alex Waddle uh, from uh, Flossie's um, Foods. And you're going to know the brand. It's cotton candy and a bunch of other cool stuff. It's family-owned. Uh, it's a family-owned and operated company, about 40 years worth of existence. You've seen the label. I'm sure of it. Basically, They've had customers that have included Sam's Club, Cracker Barrel, uh, Bass Pro Shops. We're going to get into the dynamics of a father-daughter duo operation. Stay tuned. Alex is on deck. Uh, Jeff, man, today was amazing. That last dish was my best, my favorite. I mean, it's beautiful. Like the photography on that is, oh, yeah. it, it's ridiculous. Uh, why don't you let me get off? Uh, let me get off here, and um, why don't you pop the clutch and and get into pre shift? Pre-shift. Yeah, man. Yeah, John's looking at me like, why, why would he think that's the best? Because I didn't have to cook it. <laughs> it was literally just put everything in an order and then then pour the soup. You lazy. Ah, uh, you know what? How to finish out? You finish strong, bud. So uh, yeah, we did a one pound ribeye to start with, and we did it with like potato planks, and then we did Brussels sprouts, and then. Did the basting with some butter, rosemary, and thyme. Got some great video of that, too. And then uh, we did that plate up really nice. Um, that came out phenomenal. And then we went into the steakums, uh, quote-unquote steakums. You know, when I was a kid, I remember even, you know, today, there's like Philly cheese. Uh, there's different brands out there. that We call them pucks, and they're frozen. And they come in between four to eight ounces, and then you just throw them in from frozen. You throw it right into the pan, and you start breaking them down and whatever you're going to do with the sandwich. This one was actually the ribeye was smoked and then we shaved those down. We put the first one was Philly cheese, but I can't do it. You know, just onions and mushrooms and cheese. I did caramelized onion jam with balsamic, some honey, some uh, thyme in it too as well. And then I had to use matakis, oyster mushrooms, and then did that layer of meat on top. And then I did a cheese of Fontina and white cheddar. And a beautiful baguette, little hoagie one. And then the next one was the the, the fat ass. And that what? Yeah, you heard me. The fat you ass. Call me? You, that sandwich. Did you, you try dirty. it? 
Not yet. Yeah, it's, yeah, okay, yes. look, look. I know you've had a lot. You get the meat sweats. I can I, tell. I'm actually yes. I'm going through that <laughs> that phase right as we're as we're on air here doing this. Um, I can see it. It's in my uh, my line of sight. Yeah, here. yeah. I can see it. Um, I don't know if it's going to make it home, but right now I got had to take a you know a, a break. Breaks. Yeah, a little siesta. Yeah, a little bit. So that one is uh, uzu marmalade, charred tomatoes, charred onions, uh, black garlic aioli, arugula. And then it has the sliced uh, prime rib or the steak, I'm quote unquote, which is not. And then uh, did a little cheese blend of that one. It's got Fontina, white cheddar, and Gruyere. Um, so it gave it a little more flavor, a little more depth. The uzu really comes out, takes that fat away. When you taste it, you'll see it's really just delicious. And then lastly, we did um, a rendition of what's called, most people call it pho, but it's fa. Uh, the Vietnamese dish that is just packed full of wait flavor. A wait, 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 wait. You're telling me the PHO pho, it's actually PHO. pronounced pho. Yeah. Well, I, I worked with a woman, her name was uh, Kook, and Kook used to tell me, Chef, you're pronouncing it wrong. It's pho. And it was that induction of, like, if you know about uh, Far East language, it's the enunciation of the words. So one word, could, if you announce it three different ways, can be three, three different uh, with sayings to it or meanings. So it's the way you say it. So it's fa. That dish, even though it was easy, it's so complex because of the broth that's in there. And it's so layered with different flavors. You know, it takes, I was telling John, this thing, if I were to make this from scratch, uh, from, from scratch, it's beef bones, pork bones, brisket, and you throw everything together. You char ginger, char onions, and you develop these layers. And then all of a sudden you get all these cloves and cinnamon and you just, it builds so much layer layer. That's what I love about certain like ethnic foods, because you can feel the love as they, they make their dish. You can feel just the, like you were talking about the history of how pho came about. I just, and the influence of French cuisine with the Vietnamese cuisine is just amazing for me. Well, I mean, John's, uh, that, that imagery of that yeah. dish is stunning. I, I can't wait for that to, uh, <laughs> to get out. But I was going to have that for dinner tonight. I'm going to say, pho, get about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. yeah. See, you know, it's funny. It's we talked good. about that before. John says, uh, you know, he, he spoke, he <laughs> says, you know, what would be really great is if we, you know, did some kind of fusion of Italian and the, you know, Vietnamese and, you know, pho, get about it would be the dish. And I think we should do it. I've, Figure it out. Yeah, yeah, we could probably do. Listen, I had a buddy of mine that did a pad thai carbonara. Okay. So he used, instead of using egg, he used uni. Hmm. So instead of using regular linguine or fettuccine, he used the pad thai noodle. And he actually was a chef. He's down in Miami, uh, South Beach, right across the way from the Lowell's Hotel. And um, he was from Colombia or Venezuela and trained in Italy. And then moved to Miami. So he's got Latin fusion with Italian, and then he brought that together, and it just works out so well. I can get behind that. <sighs> yeah. Uh, I, think, I think we can... Uh, can we put a dish together or what? Uh, what do you want to do next week? You want the Monte Cristo, or do you want... Oh, no, we got to go Monte Fa, Cristo, man. I mean, I, I, I'm kind of in this nostalgia. So picture, picture this, right? <laughs> um, 1985. Uh, I pull out a, uh, a food tray, you know. I sit on the couch. I put it down. I sit on a couch. Out of the microwave comes... Hungry Man. Hungry Man. Swanson's, Swanson's Hungry Man. Or whatever. Or Steakum or whatever. Brought me straight back to when we had the uh, the remote control clicker thing. It was like connected with the wire to the TV. Yeah. yeah. Somebody just posted that on Facebook where it had the switch box and it was yeah. like the wood grain. Yeah, and it had yeah. the little bump, bump, bump. Yeah. Someone literally just posted that yesterday. No kidding. Yeah. See, John's shaking his head, but like people... This is, you know, a lot of people who listen to the, in the audience are actually in our bracket. Got a lot of youngins too, which is great. But truth is, I miss that little clicker. That was, that was a good time. Now, now it was my daughter until she got to a certain age. Correct. Yeah. I mean, that was me. I mean, you too. Probably. Well, yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Change the channel. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, without further ado, um, we have a guest on hold. Uh, I kind of did the intro already. Uh, on that. And I, I kind of want to jump into it because, so I have a daughter, right? And I, and I can see myself, you know, tr and that's kind of what this is. I want to be able to like bring them into some sort of business as, you know, I get, I'm getting older. They're very little, but, um, so the situation here, um, with Lossies is, you know, it's a father daughter duo. 
So I, I thought that was really cool and it, and it kind of hit a chord with me. So I, let me, let's welcome Alex Waddle uh, on the show. Alex, how are you? I am good. Excellent. So, you know, it's funny because when I was talking with, and by the way, Pooch, uh, Sean Pooch Rivera, uh, our boy, he, uh, he kind of did the connect on, on, on this, uh, on today's for, for the guest. And when he was giving me the whole description, I was like, wow, man, oh, Flossie, it sounds familiar. As soon as he started, you know, as soon as I saw the, the bag, I was like, oh my God, I know exactly what this is. Um, so it started back in 78, right, Alex? Yep. All right. Yes. So, so introduce yourself, um, kind of give like the 30,000 foot view of uh, who you are and who the company is. <laughs> okay. I'm Alex Waddle. Um, we are Flossies. We've been around for many, many years. Like you said, 78. I was not alive then. My parents um, just kind of fell into it with family, friends. And... Um, I've just kind of been taking it over from my dad. My dad still comes here every day. He's not here right now, but we just kind of run it together. We're kind of a dream team. Um, But it started with what? Funnel cakes, right? Uh, Yes. So everybody knows us as a concession business. You know, I kind of call myself like a, like a high class carny is kind of my, the (laughs) lingo I use. Um, um, Because we have concession trays. So that's how I grew up. I grew up, you know, sleeping cakes is how I call it. Um, funnel cakes, corn dogs, lemonade, cotton candy. That's how I grew up. I literally grew up as a carny. Um, concessions, fairs, events, craft fairs, my entire life. I still do it to this day. And now I'm just running a little, you know, life-size Willy Wonka factory in the back. I love that. And, you know, a, another <laughs> fond memory is going to all the fairs, right? Um, you know, we're, yeah. f- we're from South yeah. Florida. So like, you know, Broward County Fair, or Dade County uh, Fair, Youth Fair, Youth Fair and all that. And, um, you know, all of that food, it, you know, you take a bite or you smell it, you walk by whatever, and it brings you straight back to your first time, like literally the first time. And, you know, the water pistol with the, uh, uh, with the balloon and, you know, whatever. And if you're lucky enough to uh, get a prize and, and walk out with it, you know, five, six, seven years old, whatever. Um, so, yes. I, yeah, it's that's very, pretty cool. F- fun fact, you sent me very that. Nostalgic. Say again? It's very nostalgic. Like, I remember packaging from, you know, when I was three, four. I remember, you know, the flavors from when I was three, four. I've, I've seen this this industry from the time I was a child to now, it's just everybody has their industry and I just know how it's changed over, you know, 35 years. It's just wild how it's different. Well, one way it changed, I'm looking, I'm looking at some information here. Um, in 1982, a funnel cake was a dollar 25 and, and lemonade was a dollar. Um, yes, I are making change with quarters and I can't imagine doing that now. <laughs> Can you imagine having change now? I can. I can't stand it. My my children love it. They're, they're, no. they're collecting, a, you know, pocket full of change. Um, so you, when you um, you were uh, seventy eight, you weren't born. So somewhere in the nineties, you were kind of coming of age, right into this. Yes, yes. I was about four when I started slinging cakes in a funnel cake trailer, standing on a standing on a big fifty pound powdered sugar bucket. <laughs> Powdered sugar bucket. Yeah. 50 pounds. <laughs> wow. Well, so, <laughs> so she's living, and what, she was living the dream. Wild, huh? Yes. And what's wild is we, my parents designed the trailers in, when did we have our first trailer? 82 ish. My parents designed the first funnel cake trailer. Then my mom, my mom designed it. The artwork is my mom's design the trailers to this day look the exact same they're laid out the same the artwork's the same everything's the same right and that's what i'm saying once you see the logo it 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 hits you uh you know fairly uh fairly quickly um but now you're in like a state-of-the-art facility it's it's pretty you know you're you're fairly good size operation now right well she also has the old balloons too (laughs) 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 That's what I call it. As soon as you pull up in our drive in our parking lot, it 
everyone gets out of their car and like, oh my God, it smells like, it smells like candy out here. It smells like sugar. I'm like, well, we're spinning cotton candy. The whole street smells like sugar. (laughs) Um, that's the last place that I have to be is inside your building because you wouldn't be able to stop me. Uh, you would, you would need like yeah. the whole, uh, police department, uh, for the area to, to get me from not jumping into the uh, canal of candy, you know, <laughs> jump right in. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's really like Oompa Loompa. They'd have to come get you out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That would be me. Yeah. He would be like, I want more. <laughs> I want more. What's a, I want it now, daddy. Yeah. Yes. That one. Give that me more, me. daddy. Give it more. Ver- Veruca salt. Yeah, Veruca salt. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yes. yes. You made a comment in about 35 years how things have changed. Like, what flavors have morphed that are popular now that come in the other flavors that might have like gone away that, that you guys don't do anymore? I think everybody thinks of cotton candy um, pink. Pink vanilla is the main thing. When you go to a carnival or you go to a fair, you're going to have pink. They don't say what the flavor is, but normally it's just a pink vanilla or a blue, and it's usually a blue raspberry, a blueberry. Our cotton candy is strawberry. Our pink is strawberry. Our blue is blue raspberry. So we take the extra mile to make it actually be a flavor. Most people are just generic and, you know, don't really focus on the flavor profile as we want it to taste good. We want it to feel good. We want it to be good quality products. That's what we focus on. We want you to buy it again. We don't want you to be like, oh, it's cotton candy. Get it. We want you to come back and buy it again. Well, for 40 years, it's been it's been working. Yeah, it has been. Yeah. And I, that's something think we're proud of we always want you to come back there's a reason that people come back for oh we got to get a fluffy funnel cake there might be five food trucks selling funnel cakes but i have customers that are like we got to get a flossy's funnel cake we got to buy the flossy's funnel the flossy's cotton candy because people know our reputation and that's something that i'm very very proud of and it's something i stress to my dad people love the family dynamic of us. They love our story. It makes us relatable. And that's something I really try to project to any customer or anybody that I'm sharing our story with. It just makes you relatable. And you guys are doing about 14,000 ounces a day. Yes. That, I mean, that's a lot of cotton candy. That's spinning a lot it's of candy. A of, yeah, a lot of cotton candy. And another thing that sets us apart is everything's hand spun, it's hand sealed, it's hand packaged, and it's hand packed. So I have a quality control. You know, it's three different times somebody has a quality control. You know, you mentioned machinery. Yeah, I have machinery, but it's, I have quality control with a girl that's doing it, which also sets me apart. You know, there's not there's not a machine that can do it better than what I'm doing it. Yeah, I mean, I'm on I'm on the website now. In fact, and I'm I'm just seeing some video, and you know, it's a it's a beautiful marriage of um, you know handwork and uh, and and equipment. I mean, it's 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 really beautiful. How big is the facility? Um, we're about twenty thousand square feet. Yeah, that's that's a that's for I mean for cotton candy. I mean, that's and we funnel, might cake. And funnel cake and if there's that's other a, things too. Yeah. That's a dad question. I, <laughs> <laughs> we might be a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Co- copy that. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I've, I've seen it in Bass Pro. Um, that, that, that's where, that, that's my, where I can tag it. But I also know that you've been in some other big retailers and that's, that's amazing. So the, the whole dynamic with family, so Everybody at the table here has worked for family-owned operations, um, you know, who's, who's here in this, uh, on this podcast. And it's, it's, the experiences are pretty amazing because you, you get to, you get these, these, these companies that they're real small, they start tiny, and then, you know, you're, you're blessed enough to get into this, you know, into the large, um, you know, retailers and outlets and whatnot. That family um, setting, that dynamic goes with you unless you fire yeah. your entire family and hire, you know, um, you know, prof- quote unquote professionals, um, corporate professionals. It's like you, you're, you're growing, but it's still family and you still have the, mm-hmm. you know, the, I don't want to say the, uh, 
you know, the arguments and the, all the different person family personalities that are there. And I think that's fascinating. Yeah, I think it's, we've been really fortunate to keep it. We're still very, very small. I mean, in the office, it's me, my dad and my mom. And I think our biggest struggle is the generation aspect of it. Um, but in what way? I'm, I mean, me, my dad are 35 years in age difference. So talking to him on how my generation wants to buy things and how his generation wants to buy and sell things, it's just to try to find that happy medium. He doesn't understand how the market works now. And it's just trying to, you know, guide him in that now. So welcome to you know, adulthood. My dad does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dad yeah. Has a computer at his desk. Um, he still likes to write all checks by hand, but I love that about him. I mean, there's so many things that we still do here that is so makes us who we are. It's just some things we still do from 19, you know, this a lot of this office still looks the same as it did when I was five years old. It's just comfortable and, you know, homey. <laughs> Yeah. And I think, I, I feel like we shouldn't try to lose that in general in yeah. society at large, you know, like we need, we need to have some tie in to our history, whether it's, you know, family yeah. history or, you know, history in general, we need to, we need to stay tied into it because it, it's familiar. And if you lose that familiar, yeah. familiarity, um, I don't know what happens to us, but I'm looking at this, uh, I'm watching this video of, you know, the cotton candy is getting spun and it's on the conveyor mm -hmm. belt. And then it's like spinning the, the bags. They're in bags and they're, and they're spinning on this uh, disc. And I feel like, yes. I, I feel like I can have a cocktail. You want there? <laughs> <laughs> I want to be there. I feel like I can sit here and watch this for the next like 35 minutes and just, you know, and dig myself and, and I don't know. Don't mind me. Okay. And you don't, you, you don't have anything to dilute the product down. You, that's another thing about being a family run company is that you're not diluting it. You're keeping to the brand and getting the best possible ingredients. Like you said, that what differentiates you from other manufacturers besides hand packing is that you use quality ingredients, correct? A hundred percent. We don't take any shortcuts, none, nothing. And that's something that I also make sure happens. Like, like I said before, I don't want you to buy my product one time and be like, okay, you got that cotton candy. There's a reason people go and buy a Hershey's chocolate bar over and over and over again. It's because it's the best. I want you to go buy Flossie's cotton candy over and over and over again because it's the best. Is is the cotton candy the best seller uh, out of your portfolio? I, would say, I think so because it's one of the ready – it's the only ready-to-eat item I have. The funnel cake mix is great, but you have to go make it. The corn dog mix is great. It's it's amazing, um, but you have to go make it. We also have a moonshine peanut brittle. Oh, wait, 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 time wait, 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 let's, let's, let's <laughs> talk <up>. about that. <laughs> it, it is one of our, it, it's a great product. It's, it is, you know, how, you know how peanut brittle is kind of like chewy and gets stuck in your teeth. This one is airy, doesn't get stuck to your teeth. Um, I'm trying to just let you imagine it. It is anybody that I give a can to, they eat the whole can in one sitting and they're like, Bring wait, me there's more. a can? <laughs> I gotta find this. Yes. I yes. mean, whatever, of, I can do it faster. Whatever, whatever this, I can, all, I can beat it. I, whatever it is, I can, I can do it quicker. I can eat that faster than anyone. <laughs> no, I'm gonna, I want the record. I'm just saying. Well, you, I will send you some. Yeah. All of our products are in those canisters. We just like the nostalgic of it. When did we switch over our, our, our packaging? In the 90s, late 80s. So all of our products are in that vintage container besides our cotton candy. So it's a resealable container. And, yeah, it's amazing. I would say our peanut brittle and our cotton candy are number one. Um, you mean you had me at uh, the moonshine being a, you know, like, come I, on, I, I actually like, <laughs> look like a meerkat. I literally poked my head up and I was like, Ooh, yeah, I want to, I, I want that. I want now that. He's looking at the website. He's searching I'm looking, for no, I'm, I'm looking at the notes. Um, listen, so I know I didn't even put that on there. I'm sorry. I don't see it. But <laughs> what's funny, 
But wait, what's funny is uh, in 1985, right? Because it's it's it goes by year. So in 1985, it just says I'm born. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I yeah. You know what I thought was funny is that's when my dad told me the cotton candy was added to the trailer, and I was like, what a coincidence! Like, oh no, kidding! I was born, and the cotton candy was added to the trailers. Like, it was meant to be. Now, do you eat cotton candy yourself? Like, are you just over it? You, there's no from no way I'm not going to eat that anymore. I will tell you, every time I'm at a store, it doesn't matter, gas station, dollar store, Walmart, grocery store, I always search for the cotton candy. I want to know where it's made. I want to know what it tastes like, how much it is, et cetera. So, yes, I always buy cotton candy no matter where I go. I taste it. I look at it. I feel it. Is, yes. Is, is it a big field candy. out there, you know, in terms of uh, companies who are producing cotton candy? Yes and no. I think there's probably about 10 of us. Um, but domestic, like here in the States, you mean? Yeah. 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 About 10 of us. I I would imagine that's, that's a lot for cotton candy, but I mean, at the end of the day, every, every town has a, you know, some sort of a fair and, you know, there's a uh, Cabela's, you know, internet, all that stuff. Is, is internet sales probably your, your number one or is it, um, Bass Pro or one of them? It's my, um, it's my, 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 my internet sales are great, but it's my customer base, like my Cabela's brick and mortar, my Bass Pro. It's a lot of my um, private label customers, but they all find me through my, through my website. Now you said private label. I was about to ask that. Now, do they do different flavor profiles or is it just the strawberry and blue raspberry that you do? Some of them do. Um, we do private blends for a lot of people. If they have, so Wally's is one of my new private label customers. We've been working with them for probably six months. Are you guys familiar with Wally's at all? No, negative. Okay. They're in like Illinois area right in there. They're similar to Bucky's. I know you guys have heard of Bucky's. Uh, of course. Yeah. We have but a Bucky's down here. <laughs> they are taking over like, Illinois, that Midwest area. Exact same layout as Bucky's. They're going to be probably close to the size of Bucky's when they, you know, gain some speed. But they have a drink, an orange cream drink. So we created an orange cream cotton candy for them. Ooh. So they have an orange cream and then a classic cotton candy. So yes, I can create flavors for customers if that's what they want. So that orange cream is only yeah. for them. Yeah. Wait a minute. I'm already, the the oh, wheels are already turning. Wait, 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 wait. So I know what I know what Jeff is. Jeff and I are staring at each other here as you're as you're talking. So do you, can you do a bourbon? I was thinking bourbon and bacon. I, I know you were. Yeah. I was getting there. Getting, so can you do can you do a bourbon and bacon cotton candy or or or, no? or a bourbon straight? <laughs> this is not a joke. Yeah. This is not a joke. I, she just said that we can literally do anything. Oh wow! I heard that. What's if the, there's a flavor profile available, we can literally do anything. What's the R and D uh, involved for that? How do you? I want to be a part of the tasting. Of yeah, that. that's what I'm saying. Man. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine bacon, I, cotton I candy? Part, I am the social media. I am the. I am the customer <laughs> service. I am. I am everything. So. We can appreciate all of what you just said. Um, all right, so I think we should talk about that. And, you know, let's, you know, not now off, off, uh, off air. We should have that. I, I want to go out and buy a cotton candy machine. <laughs> nah, you don't have to, you know, we, yeah. No. Can you imagine like having a dessert and have like raining cotton candy on the, just think about that for a minute. I'm, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to give the, the, uh, I don't want to give it away to Wally's. That's all I'm saying. Nah, yeah. Nah. <laughs> they can have keep your ideas away. Nah. Keep yeah. your ideas yourself. Keep it yourself. I mean, it's all, there's only, a, you know, <sighs> Only a few people are going to hear this. Uh, <laughs> just a smidge. Just a smidge. Yeah, that's, true. that's true. That's true. You can always edit it out. Yeah. No, no we don't edit. We don't edit. No, that's the thing. We keep the... <laughs> so the integrity of the program that we do is, um, you know, unless somebody says something, you know, off color that they accidentally... We don't ever go no, back. We don't and, even do that. Because we've had we people kind of you. boo-boo. We no. Saved you, we saved you a few times. You don't know it. Uh, but yeah, we've... It's true. Look, John. <laughs> really? Yeah. I think 
Y'all, y'all should do the forget about it because it's the 25 year anniversary of The Sopranos. So that's what yeah, y'all that's should true. Go with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ironically enough, I was just watching a rerun of uh, Zoli and Isles, and the woman who plays one of the characters' mothers was the psychiatrist. This was just yesterday. What was the Sopranos psychiatrist for Tony? No kidding. Uh, what is it called? Uh, Disney Springs. Um, I, w- I took a ride with uh, with John. Um, I don't know a month ago. We went to Disney Springs, and uh, and and the son was there. What's his name? Uh, Michael. No. The, oh my god! I can't. Uh, oh, I forgot his name. Anyway, he was there. I saw him, and um, I'll remember in a second. But uh, I I saw him, and I go. I think that was uh, the kid from The Sopranos. He goes, no, no, it wasn't. I saw him again. It was definitely him. 100%. Like, you know, you can, it was clear as day. Um, I just can't remember his name. It was Meadow and, uh, and, and the, the, whatever they said. Anyway. Um, uh, he can't Google it because he's got the phone. John is usually the Google guy. Yeah, the Google. Uh, the expert in Google. Yeah. He's a Googler. Anyhow. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. 25th anniversary, Alex. I think that, uh, I think you're on to something. How about a You're pizza welcome. cotton candy for that, huh? Little, no? Eh, no. Forget about you know, it. I have the savory ones, and they, like, freak me out, so I don't know. So, what do you I mean? Why? Like, I don't know. I just, it's like, like, my brain and my taste buds, like, you know, miscommunicate. It doesn't make sense to me. Mm. AJ. Like, I think, I don't Oh, okay. It's like Antonio Anthony Jr. John Soprano. Yeah. That's what his name AJ was. Right. I feel like it's Tony, but what I don't remember them calling him Tony. So yeah, yeah it was sense. Anthony, Tony, AJ, right? All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can sleep tonight. I'll be able to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So back to back to the savory. So what that's not a that's not a, you're afraid of it. I'm not afraid of it, but I've I've played with like a pickle cotton candy before and it was just like like I just, I was like, I can't sell this. Like, I don't love it. I'm thinking yeah. about that. I mean, uh... here's the thing that the the median, like potato chips is a great neutral median because mm-hmm. you can put all those different flavors as we saw, like, you know, chicken and waffles and sriracha and all that stuff. Sugar's a different component. Plus, when you're spinning sugar, you have to reach a certain um, temperature. But then when you add certain things yeah. to it, it won't inhibit the flavor too so there's a lot of when you're spinning sugar especially there's a lot of science behind it that that's true yeah. alex it's not it's i mean i guess so right she knows better than i do yeah it gets about 350 degrees i just don't like i just don't like garlic flavored sugar it just wasn't for me yeah there, there's certain ones i wouldn't do <laughs> yeah no that, yeah. that would be good but but i think bacon would work Bacon, lemon, any citrus would work probably because you you have the orange cream right there, so that yeah. works. Well, I'm um, looking at it like this. Lemonade. Go ahead. I'm sorry. She had a lemonade. Yeah, we have a lemonade. Ooh, oh. take that strawberry cotton candy with the lemonade and put that on top of a drink like a mojito. Oh yeah, we have a strawberry lemonade. She they did one strawberry okay. lemonade. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I mean, so obviously we're all about the food and and the culinary and you know cocktails and you know how it's all built. Um, you know, so when we have these sort of, uh, conversations, what ends up happening, you know, Jeff, his gears just, <laughs> just start grinding, just start getting, you know, getting out there. But, um, you know, the whole thing with Let bacon, me tell you what, go ahead. The flavors we do have are strawberry, blueberry, vanilla, which I kind of say vanilla birthday cake, wedding cake. You can call it whatever you want to, um, orange, banana, we have a peppermint in the winter and we have a strawberry lemonade or just a lemonade in the spring did okay. i say banana yep okay yeah. yeah i would go for a banana too i would go for a maple if that worked i don't yeah, know maple. How... maple. because that would be good for like the fall like an lto not mm-hmm. a lettuce tomato and onion <laughs> just limited time offer yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think i can get behind that too the thing with bacon <laughs> We're stuck. Well, I want to get. The, I, I I don't want to forget because, like, when you have a donut, yeah, right, and and it's a you know the bacon donut. I when I first saw that, it I was that's I, where I was going. With I it. was not going to be happy. I didn't feel I was going to like it. As it turns out, you know, I think probably I don't know eight uh, percent of my my body fat is probably uh, you know bacon donuts. Bacon only eight. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's so much more than uh than I'm consuming. Uh, you know, that's I'm trying to stay healthy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, John's I I've never seen him laugh so hard. <laughs> yeah, and he does it in silence. That's the amazing uh, the amazing part. Um, all right, so what's the deal with Crayola? They're fun. I love them. <laughs> but I, they came to us. <laughs> How do we make it? Yeah, well, I mean, what's the... Is it like just a whole variety of colors? Like, what's the... What, what's going on? Because I can't yeah, see your computer. Do. No, you can't, can you? <laughs> no, I can't. Okay, <laughs> well. They have, a, they have a custom bag, a private label bag, and we would do... For a while, they would order like every color to the rainbow, obviously, for, you know, to look like a crayon box. But... As everyone knows, everyone likes the pink and the blue, the strawberry and blueberry. So now they just do strawberry and blueberry. There's about five Crayola. It's a Crayola experience, I guess. I should tell you that. What is that like? A, a, from where, one, though? Where do, you, where do you have that experience? Um, there's one in Dallas, one in Philadelphia. I think there's one in um, the Mall of America, maybe one in Florida. There's only like five or six of them in the United mm. States. And it's Silent kind of John like knows. A, like a Silent John, John just nodded. He's like right over there. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that. I like to, you know, maybe take the kids. You yeah. can like make your own crayon. They've made me a big pink one before that says like Flossie's Pot and Candy. Oh, that's cool. They're nice. Yeah. I, I can get by. I'm, I'm so far, I'm, I'm really behind this. <laughs> like, uh, you, can, you can probably make bacon. Um, but how do we do this, <laughs> Alex? What do we do? Do we fly to you? Like, what do we, what do, how do we make this happen? <laughs> Oh, a bacon cotton candy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we just find some flavoring and play with it. You're in Arkansas, but I mean, right? if you want, yeah, you want to come visit, come on down. Yeah, I, I, well, I, we got the World Food Championship is in April. Yeah, it yes, is. in Bentonville, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sam's backyard, Sam's club's backyard. Yeah. Yes, we're we're about four hours from there. It's like the final table is what it's you, called. You should be. Um, you should you should get involved with the World Food Championship too. Imagine like you could yes, sponsor. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Pooch wanted me to come to Dallas, but it just didn't work out. Oh, well. I love Dallas. Man, you let me tell you <sighs> something. We had such a blast <laughs> over there. Um still trying to recover from that. Yeah, man. It was what November. Yeah, there were oh. you picture picture having about uh, close to a thousand competitors, right? And on three to five person teams. And uh, and then picture another three thousand to five thousand people spectators a day walking in, walking in, and and it was like a madhouse of awesomeness. It was just really great, um, and all the booths, like the vendor booths, and it was just really great experience. Um, you know, and I would imagine, yeah. you know, with, with what you're doing, that you know, we'll connect it. Maybe there's something. Uh, maybe something It'd be great can they can do like a basket and have their product in there and they have to utilize that. Remember like the MREs with the military. Yeah. That would have been a cool thing for them to have like, Ooh, cotton candy. What I have to do with that kind of thing mm-hmm. and change that. Well, fun fact. Fun fact, I went to culinary school in Dallas. Oh, did you? Which one? I did. The art Institute of Dallas. I wonder if that's Steve member or the chef that I knew that was walking by. Mm-hmm. He's the Steve. director. He pilot. Yeah. Oh, so it's the same school. Oh wow! Look at that. Yeah. yeah he, he's my instructor. That's f- hysterical. Like, yeah. Was it last year? Two two years ago, I was there doing the culinary summit for the American Culinary Federation. That's with Keith, and we did the. Uh, oh, I forgot the dish now. A uh, doll, and uh, we actually cooked for about 110, 120 people at that school. So that's pretty amazing. So really small. Uh, culinary world, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah, it is definitely. There's always six degrees of separation with somebody in the culinary field. I think so. And I'm looking at, I don't see that, uh, I don't see the culinary school angle here on the, on the sheet. Did you do pastry when you went to culinary school or did you do savory? I did all, I mean, I did all of it. I mean. So you, you did basically both, but did you, you ended up getting what degree though in culinary or in pastry and baking and pastry? I didn't do the extra pastry. No, I just did gotcha. the pastry class. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was the same way with like, Johnson and Wales. Yeah, it was just it was two thousand five when I was there. Yep, it goes on your, on the sheet. It goes from two thousand to two. You skipped over uh, that, and, and you know um, I'm 
I'm a little hurt by that, actually. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm over it. I'm just going to throw you. You, you you keep you're keeping it exciting. So did you ever do anything with that? Did you did you work in the field? With, or did you, or you did that specifically for uh, flossies? Well, I always wanted to do like wedding event catering. Um, that was the like avenue I wanted to go down. When I was, I knew that's what I wanted to come out doing. When I went to culinary school, that's what I knew I wanted to do. But. I've done some things here and there with it on the side, but you know, once I got here, it's just, I love, I love this. I love doing it. I love working with my customers and I love building this business. I love, 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 love the cotton candy field. I love being a carny. <laughs> it's in my sure. blood. Yeah, sure. You can't get out. <laughs> are, so are you on the road most of the time or do you, do you stay in the, the facility? I stay in the facility. They don't let her out. <laughs> they don't let her out. <laughs> do um maybe do you, more like I'm I'm more like a Willy Wonka. Maybe I should change the title. I mean I think we have to do a tour. I think we have to go. We're gonna have to make this happen. You don't yeah, see me complaining. Home. You know, it's like the Brady Bunch goes to Hawaii, but instead we're gonna so the walk and talk goes to Arkansas. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. yeah, we should. yeah. Hmm. We're gonna goes talk. to Arkansas, yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen. Like I said, um, I can, I can. I'm behind all of this. You know, you know what Arkansas is also known for. Mm -hmm. One of your favorite things: bacon. Not only bacon. Yeah. Beef. Beef. The yeah. booth. Yeah. We got a pe we got Peggy Jean Farms here. Creekstone. Look, look it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, this, we can we can make it like a, a beef. <laughs> <laughs> beef bacon and candy tour i'd like to get a uh, 2024 I'd like, I'd like to get some uh, ribeye cotton candy please <laughs> don't dude, seriously that that actually might work yeah sounds really really like fattening like just like <laughs> bone marrow like okay. bone marrowy on the lips mm, uh, so here okay so you you didn't have so this was a, a kind of impromptu right what we're doing and um, you didn't have time to, to find out about me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, but yeah. I, I feel like I've a lot. Yeah it, yeah. it doesn't take long. Uh, you know, we, we lay it all out there, but, um, yeah, no, I'm all about the fatty fat fatness and that's what I got going on, uh, in a happy way. You know, it's all happy, all happy, uh, pounds. I, I'll like, let you know that we actually had that one pound ribeye and I cut about almost probably around six ounces of fat off of it. And there's nothing left for some reason, just so you know, that wasn't nice to put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't nice. Enough. But every, you know what, listen, we, uh, yeah, so with my wife, now I'm going to, now I'm going to hear the, you, you, she doesn't listen to this. She listened she one time. She stopped. Right. She started. And I think now, now she's, she's like, like an loyal listener. I, I think she's turning herself into like Nancy Drew. She's taking little nuggets, <laughs> you know, out of this. yeah, she's, she's like, uh, something that'll be used against me later. I don't know. You know how it goes. Yeah. No. Cause my wife doesn't listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just you two. Yeah. Well, whatever. It's Cindy it's doesn't fun. listen to it. Oh yeah, but we don't talk about Cindy like you know telling her like secrets because John doesn't talk, right? You know, it's it's all mysterious. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's good stuff. Um, you know, there's an interesting fact I wanted to bring up earlier. Um, so you have you said it was a, a majority female run operation as well, right? Yes. Yeah, I mean that's that's pretty cool. That's an interesting uh, factoid. Um, you know, especially in, uh, you know, 2024, that's pretty good. I guarantee you. And I don't know this cause this is again, prompt to, mm. but what's the average lifespan of your worker that's working for the company right now? Like what's the, um, right, like the tenure of somebody, let's say. Say that again. Like the tenure, like how long has somebody worked for you the most, I guess the highest like, amount of years that somebody's the worked long, for? I've had a group. Um, three of my ladies that, that have been here, they've been here for like 10, 11 years. And you've got some, you know, some, some others that are there longer. I mean, we were talking earlier off well, here. They, I'm sorry, go ahead. They're my long, they're my longest. And then my other girls, you know, some have been here five years. And then I have another set that were hired that have been like three years. All of them have been here a while. 
And that's, that's a testament to the brand that they have, what they do for their employees. Usually a family owned has a lot more love for their employees or their associates. Yeah. It's not just, uh, not, no, it's not we just always name. tell them every time we hire them, like I, my kids were raised here. I was raised here. I have three girls. So, you know, as soon as I had my babies, they were here with me. They were all raised here till they got old enough to go to school. So, my girls here, you know, I understand you have children, you have an emergency, of course, go, you need to take a day off with your baby. Of course, I understand there's a lot more leniency here than if you were working somewhere else. And we understand that. I always, your family always comes first, period. Yeah. And, you know, in today's environment, it's so difficult to keep to keep anybody, uh, you know, we, we obviously in the food business, whether that's manufacturing distribution, you know, on the, the restaurant side, uh, farms everywhere. Um, there's a shortage of, uh, regular workers, you know, um, people who are going to come in and, and, and stay on board. You get a lot of turnover. Um, that's pretty typical nowadays. So what you, whatever you're doing, you know, blessings to you. Cause that's, um, that's great. I, I most yeah, of the, you take, you take care of them, they'll take care of you. Yeah, 100%. Uh, question for you. The, the the raw product, how does that fluctuate and how does that, like, hamper the uh, your ROI? Like, I know for beef, it so swings every single day. How does that ha- how does that affect your, the raw product? How does it affect your pro- bottom line? We just recently started blending our own sugars, What I mean by that is we buy a truckload of sugar, raw sugar, and we um, blend the color and the flavoring. So we're able to keep, you know, our cost where we need it to be right now. Um, If we were buying, you know, a pallet of sugar at a time, it would be awful. But we buy a full truckload of sugar at a time. But but inflation still taking a toll, right? I can't yeah. imagine your, your costs must have still gone up over the last uh, year or so. That's why we had to make it. That's why we had to make a choice. Like we have to start blending our own sugar. Like we, my dad owned a mill for a few years. We built our own mill just, you know, a couple of miles down the road from us. So my dad's very familiar with the milling business. He knows how to blend all dry ingredients. So it wasn't anything for us to buy a, a blender and start blending our own sugars. So we bought a truckload of sugar and we knew our recipes and got our costs back to where we needed them to be. That's, that's really, you know, the whole production and manufacturing aspect, I think is always, it's, it's interesting because most people don't think about it. You know, they go to the store, it's in a bag in a box, uh, in a styrofoam, you know, whatever, uh, cellophane and they buy it and they go home, they eat it eat half of it, throw it away, waste it, whatever, but they don't understand what it takes to actually produce the product, you know, get it packaged, get it shipped, you know, get it stocked. The whole, you know, the whole rigmarole, especially if you're dealing with like, you know, the big box stores that are out there and what it takes to, um, to win those deals, like to actually get in a Sam's club or, a you know, Bass Pro Shop. Like that's such a, um, that's such a deal. I mean, Mm -hmm. John, when, uh, if you remember when uh, Don Darren with you know with the Don Pablo Coffee, when he went from little markets to Costco, I mean, what a like you got to be geared up, ready, all everything has to be perfect, and all the paperwork. The, the I remember the bonded and all that stuff. I remember the vendor agreement was I don't know five inches uh, thick. You know what I mean? Question: Do you sell the cruise ships, cruise lines? No, you know somebody. Uh, I definitely do. I just thought about it, and then I'm like, "What? What a great way to be on a, you know, Disney cruise, and then there's your cotton candy hmm. or Royal Caribbean." Um, and that's a really that's a really good point. Is it's a lot. A lot of this business is your connections and how you treat your relationships. Because I can't tell you how many times, just like right now. It's all about your relationships. You have to keep your relationships good and intact because you never know what somebody may bring you. You never know. That's why you always have to be, you have to be kind. You have to be nice. You have to leave everybody happy and then, you know, 
excited about you. You never want to leave somebody mad or upset with you. I try to leave my house like that every day, but I, I fail. <laughs> I fail. I'm kidding. You need cotton candy in your life. I do need cotton candy. Can you imagine life. having cotton candy? Well, your dentist would kill you. Right. <laughs> so, but hold on a minute. I, I actually kind of want to circle back real quick to uh, a dish. Can you, can you do, uh, can you a put dish. a dish together with, 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 yeah. Yeah. So what's really easy about sugar with the cotton candy, it caramelizes. So there's, there you can definitely enhance. There's strawberry cotton candy she was talking about. The dish that we did at the Farmer's Credible Dinner, which is the flourless chocolate cake with the noble citrus juice. Yeah. Orange. We could have used the orange cream, but obviously that's, that's somebody's, but we could do orange cotton candy, or we could have done the strawberry cotton candy. So there's dishes that you can definitely do. Now, savory dishes, you can still do it because you probably have like a blanket or a bland or I don't know what the word I'm looking for, the sugar that you can just put in the median and then you can actually do stuff with it that way. Interesting. Yeah. You can even do drinks. There's a lot of people that are doing lime, yeah. lime infused drinks with the cotton candy. Alex, you were going to, you're looking yeah. to say something there. Go ahead. I was, that's why I was about to ask you guys ever make cocktails. I mean, cocktails are easy to add cotton candy to. We're, I always think about we're very proficient and, on cocktails. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, well, but, but, but hold on, hold on, Jeff. So with, with, with the cotton candy, mm-hmm. is it something that you would keep it in its, in, in that, that cotton candy form and, and work up into a. Yeah. So one of the things I have that I want to do is having a lardon of bacon and a lardon means it's actually a thick piece of bacon. And I wanted to build some kind of contraption that you pour the bourbon over, light it on fire, and then the sugar from the cotton candy melts and it rains down bacon hmm. and it caramelizes the bacon. So like a maple flavored bacon with the bourbon and then lighting it on fire. Okay. Yeah. That's that's the gears going in my head. Alex, how, how difficult is it to, <laughs> to get this? And, and how long, by the way, because he's going to, next question is, can you have it by next week or the two weeks or right. three weeks so I can start doing that? Um, we just have to get a sample of some flavoring. Because hmm. I want to make a whole big thing out of this. Well, I actually know okay. my friend from yesterday that does the encapsulation stuff. That's a good partnership for her, meeting Alex oh, yeah. and Steph. Hmm. They can meet. As long as it's a dry flavoring, yeah. yep. I can make it happen. Yeah, my, I have a friend of mine who's a research and development chef that does um, encapsulating different flavor profiles, both for baking and also for um, like fermentation of sausage and encapsulating salts. And when you encapsulate the product, it actually helps the product get the salt throughout it and doesn't moist, moisten up the actual sponge. It just keeps it the flavor. So instead of doing like uh, a garlic sourdough bread, they'll un- do a uh, mixture of this flavoring of garlic and it doesn't, it's not off putting. It's just got that really nice roasted garlic flavor all through the entire flavor profile of the bread. That's what her company does. Huh. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, Alex, I mean, I feel like we're going to have uh, some other conversations. <laughs> And it's funny. She's like, do you know anybody that does this stuff kind of thing? And I'm like, uh, no, not really off the top of my head. And then today. I mean, that's what I love about what we do. So what we, so listen, Alex, audience, everybody, yes. I mean, what, how this works is we have this beautiful vehicle that is the, uh, you know, walk and talk media, which is um, our podcast, obviously walk and talk podcast, which you're listening to now. But then we also have our, our video series, uh, restaurant recipes, and also the dirty dash cocktail hour, which you'd find on YouTube. It's um, it was streaming. I, I kind of pulled it down. Uh, I want to resurrect the streaming component because we're on Roku, Android and Amazon um, TV, but I, I, I want to revamp that and come back real strong with some interesting content for that. Something new, different and all that. But um we're so ingrained um, in this food business that we just have, we're really fortunate. We we know people for this and people for that and the connections and, you know, they say business gets done on the golf course. And I say business gets done in the green room now over here, you know? So um, yeah, yeah there's, there's some things we might be able to do together. What does your schedule look like in April, like April 10th and 11th in uh, that time period? Because Miami's having a food and beverage at sea convention for cruises. 
at sea. Yeah, it's um, it's not at said, sea. It's at a warehouse. They're just calling it that because that's where the food and beverage of all of the cruise ships go. And every oh, single it, buyer is going to be you there. You won't even need any drama, I mean. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're not Okay. You're not gonna go on the SS Minnow. Um anything during the week is usually fine. All right. All right. We, we, we'll definitely circle back around with you on that one. Yeah, so I think this is really interesting. Um, uh, let's um, we're gonna we're gonna have some conversation off air and uh, and put some okay. really cool stuff together. How do people find you? What's the best way? Our website. You can email me directly from there. www.flossiesfoods with an s dot com, or you can go to our Instagram or Facebook. Flossies Foods. All right, I'll put that in the uh, in the description as well. Um, Alex, really, thank you for being on the program. Uh, we appreciate you very much. Uh, I think there's some sweetness that we can achieve together. You see that? How we did that there? Love. Yeah. Love, love. Excellent. All right, um, John. As always, a pleasure not hearing you, um, <coughs> Jefferson. Dude. I'm so stoked about the food today. It was awesome. Thanks, man. John, I, I, we're going to get some pictures today. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We are out. Let me tell you about my friends over at Citrus America and their amazing juicing equipment. They're revolutionizing the way you enjoy freshly squeezed juice. They're at the best hotels, restaurants, and markets. Their mission is simple. Develop a unique consumer experience with on-premise juicing. Deliver healthy taste options to clientele and juice more faster. It's that easy. Citrus America supplies the highest quality juicing equipment and solutions in the industry. So whether you're a small business owner or a large corporation, Citrus America has the right juicing equipment for you. Find out more at citrusamerica.com.